if you've got volume loss you just need to have fillers or fat transfer like it's just it's simple simple as that really if you've got volume loss fillers if it's skin quality improvement polynucleotides hyaluronic acid radio frequency microneedling laser something like that but volume loss is only fillers guys Hello friends, today I'm going to be talking about polynucleotides. We've been using polynucleotides in the clinic since before COVID, so we do have a decent amount of experience in using them. Before I start, one thing that I will say is I'm seeing an increasing number of people that I like to call victims of biostimulators. And what I mean by that is they're totally happy to have an injection to have some kind of biostimulator whether it's a hyaluronic acid biostimulator or polynucleotide or um, gallery or something like this but they really don't want to have any filler like it's okay as long as it's not cross-linked which doesn't make any sense to me because a lot of the biostimulators actually are cross-linked like for example Bellatech and Revive so Look, if you need volume, you need volume, and no amount of biostimulator is gonna help you with that. And with that, let's continue. The more eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that yes, I have a bruise, that's because I've been having 70 high R, which is a hyaluronic acid-based biostimulator. But look, I don't need volume here. I literally just want some skin improvement, okay? So first of all, what is a polynucleotide and how is it different from a hyaluronic acid biostimulator? So these are polymers consisting of double-stranded deoxyribonucleosides and they are a medical device which have been in use since about 2004 and they have been used as wound healing accelerators or for intra-articular injections because they have this lubricating property. So these are typically made from trout gonads and polynucleotides are essentially the building blocks of your DNA. So these are not something to be having if you are vegan or vegetarian or allergic to fish. There are a number of studies showing that the biostimulatory action of polynucleotide might be greater than that found in hyaluronic acid. But it's also worth me saying that they do give you a slightly different effect clinically. So if you're looking for an immediate kind of glossiness and plumpness hydration to the skin you're better off using hyaluronic acid the polynucleotides though give you a more dermal effect so i have been super happy with them for treatment of more crepey skin texture um, or the treatment of stretch marks although it is true to say that you do get an immediate plumping also from the polynucleotide just because you've injected a gel into the skin but it's not something which is long lasting so both polynucleotides and hyaluronic acid will act on different receptors on the fibroblast, which is of course the cell that produces collagen. The polynucleotide acts on receptor 39 and 40, whereas the hyaluronic acid acts on CD44 or CD168. So it kind of makes sense that you would get a different result from using the polynucleotide than hyaluronic acid. And it also kind of makes sense that you would want to switch between the two or alternate them. Look, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to which biostimulator you should use. I think sometimes people get some choice paralysis and they, they're not sure what to do, so they don't make a decision. My advice would be try both. See which one works for you, which one you prefer. Okay, so where can you use it? Pretty much anywhere. Uh, the most common areas, at least with me, would be around the eye, the neck, backs of the hands you know for this creepy skin texture here but you can also use it to stimulate hair growth even for into the vulva and as i mentioned you can use it for stretch mark improvement and also scar improvement as well okay so stretch marks are either from mechanical stretching like for example a bodybuilder um, or it can be an endocrine thing so during pregnancy or um, too much cortisol uh, corticosteroids something like that other treatments include laser and light therapies microneedling radiofrequency microneedling carboxytherapy and most of these treatments the aim is to produce new collagen reduce redness reduce inflammation and increase pigmentation okay so i've previously said that the polynucleotide acts on the fibroblast great but it also has this effect where it helps to 
replenish stuff that the fibroblasts might need. Like, for example, nitrogen bases, nucleotide precursors. And by doing this, it increases the viability of the fibroblast. So in this study where the patients received a course of polynucleotides, they saw a bettering in their global aesthetic improvement scale, with the only side effects being perhaps a little bit of bruising. That was it. See, this is the thing about polynucleotides. So the only reason why you would not do them is because you don't want the bruising and downtime. And I guess, of course, there's the expense as well. But if you are going to be having another treatment for a specific indication, whether it is stretch marks, hair, skin rejuvenation, whatever, it makes sense to do a course of polynucleotides prior to that. So different products have got different concentrations of polynucleotides. So they might range from something like 7.5 milligrams per two mils for something like a nucleophil soft or plenest eye. Of course, you can use these around the eye or in anywhere with very delicate, thin skin, right the way up to something like the nucleophil strong, which has got 40 milligrams per two mils. You would typically use the strong in patients with average or thicker skin. Um, so, for example, on myself, if I was treating my face, I would use Nucleophil Strong. On other patients, if I'm treating a more delicate area, for example, the neck or perhaps the back of the hands, I might go with the medium. And most brands will have a selection of different strengths of polynucleotide. Some, such as the Mastelli brand, will even have um, ones that you can dilute quite a lot and you can mix it in with other different products if you're making your own mesotherapy cocktail. There was a recent consensus report written by some doctors in Italy who use an awful lot of polynucleotides and one of the concepts that they came up with, although I don't think it was new or unique to them, was the idea of polynucleotide priming, which is use of polynucleotides prior to performing other treatments, for example, dermal fillers, laser resurfacing, HIFU, anything really. So the idea behind this is that by pre-exposing to the polynucleotides, you will get a larger and faster onset of response from doing your second treatment type. Okay, this is really interesting actually. So there was a study done of 39 patients who had venous ulcers on the legs. Okay, so far so good. Group one received surgical debridement and topical application of polynucleotides. Group two received the debridement, but this time application of hyaluronic acid. Complete healing occurred in 60% of group one, that's the polynucleotide group, and 22% of group two, that's the hyaluronic acid group. So the authors concluded that the polynucleotides basically sped up the healing of these venous ulcers. According to this consensus group, they felt that you would get a better result if you started your polynucleotide injections before you have the second treatment of whatever else it is you're going to have done, like you know your laser or whatever, but it only had to be a week before that second treatment. This is their opinion, however. How do you apply the product? Well, normally you would inject it, so you take a very fine needle and you do either a few big papules like you would do with Profilo, so it's five injections on each side of the face, or you can do smaller injections where you are spreading it out over a larger area. You can use a cannula as well. Um, it's not my preference to use a cannula, actually. I find that patients tolerate it better um, if they have injection with a needle. And it's suggested that you have one treatment every 14 to 21 days and a total of four. So we've got this effects on the fibroblast we've got also this giving the fibroblast what it needs concept but it also has uh, activity on reactive oxygen species as well polynucleotides also reduce matrix metalloproteinase one expression and this thing stops you from producing more collagen so it has this effect as well it also has an anti-inflammatory effect by down regulating the mechanism by which you have inflammation it helps to cause new blood vessel growth and of course you need new blood vessels if you're gonna bring in more oxygen and nutrients to the skin and it also helps to prevent too much melanin synthesis so it might be useful in patients with melasma for example although interestingly there was a paper that showed if you had radiofrequency microneedling with or without polynucleotides actually there wasn't a difference in terms of the melasma what does it mean for you okay so improved skin texture as I mentioned, it inhibits the release of this matrix metalloproteinase 1 and also elastase, which is bad for your skin. Improves DNA synthesis because it gives you more stuff that you need to make it. 
treats hyperpigmentation by suppressing melanin production, helps regenerate hair loss, and that's an increase in thickness and hair count. It's probably worth me saying as well that it's a natural product. So it's from fish, essentially. But I've never heard of any kind of immune cross-reactivity or indeed any complications with polynucleotides since I've started using them, which is, is pretty good. And you know, we do a lot of cases with polynucleotides. So they're very safe. So who can have polynucleotides? Literally anybody can have them. If you're already having aesthetic procedures done, the addition of polynucleotides into your treatment regime will only improve your results and make them appear more quickly. If you're not having any aesthetic treatments done and you want to look at skin rejuvenation and skin quality, yeah, polynucleotides are definitely a thing you should look at. If you've got stretch marks, scarring, if you have hair thinning, or if you want to treat an area which is quite difficult to treat, like for example around the eye, polynucleotides are right for you. They, are, however, are not right for you if you can't have something which is made from fish. But just to reiterate my first point, if you've got volume loss, you just need to have fillers or fat transfer. Like, it's just, it's simple. Simple as that, really. If you've got volume loss, fillers. If it's skin quality improvement, polynucleotides, hyaluronic acid, radiofrequency microneedling, laser, something like that. But volume loss is only fillers, guys. Final thought. Why did the vampire go to the clinic? Because they had creepy skin. Don't forget to subscribe.